CIT-225 Network Security and Penetration Testing. We covered distributed, distributed attacks last time. Today we will try to understand what is a TCP SYN or what is a TCP SYN attack. As you know that whenever two computers are communicating with each other, there is a three-way handshake. SYN, SYNAC and then ACK. So, these kind of attacks are usually called half open attacks as well since two computers would communicate to each other and then it would ask for the acknowledgement but since it's a spoofed packet it would never receive an acknowledgement. Client and server exchange a sequence of messages after establishing a TCP connection uses the familiar three-way handshake of TCP. Attackers establish many half connections, data structures in memory that holds all, uh, all the pending half connections increases in size. Now, hacker only uses the IP spoofing technique to send excessive SYN requests to the server. Now, what happens is that since the hacker is using, uh, is sending a special packet where the destination is another computer and not sent back to the same computer who is actually requesting the communication. So if the packets would be going to the third computer which does not exist, the computer who is sending the packet would keep on waiting for the acknowledgement. Thus it is called a half open connection if it's not receiving the acknowledgement it would take memory and it would keep on trying till it receives the acknowledgement that's a tcp sin attack as you can see the hacker is sending the multiple spoofed accent to the buffer and then it's going to other computers whether they exist or they don't exist on the network now a smurf attack is ICMP attack is used to handle errors and exchange control messages on a network. Echo messages are the ones which are sent to the remote clients in order to receive the feedback from them. Just to know that they are active or reachable and to detect any problems on the network. ICMP process is executed using the ping command. And the main component involved in a smurf attack is a hacker packet amplifies or intermediate devices and the target computer. Recently automated tools have been developed that enable the hackers to send these attacks simultaneously to several intermediaries. As you can see that the hacker is using ICMP echo request packets to the packet amplifier or a switch since all these devices are connected to the switch. Now if the hacker would directly send a ping request to Elise's computer, it would be a single request and Elise would respond that okay, I am active and I am responding. Instead of that, what hacker does is, it would target the packet amplifier or the switch and all the devices inside the network which are connected to the switch would send a ping to Ali's computer. Now imagine how many devices are connected with one another and then all of them are sending a request to an individual computer and it's responding to those ping requests. It requires a lot of memory and processing time. That's why it's called ping of death as well. The only difference between the smurf attack and a fraggle attack is that in fragile attack they use UDP packets. Attacker uses a spoofed IP address to broadcast hundreds of UDP packets across the network. Intermediate devices reply the victim computer by sending the hundreds of UDP echo, echo uh, reply packets. Best possible results in a system crash or at least it produces the excess network traffic which would either make the computer unavailable on the network or if it's a server serving other computers on the same network it would be reachable or they'll fail they'll face difficulty in exchanging information with that computer 
Non DDoS attacks are DDoS tools use distributed technologies to generate a large network of hosts. Hosts can attack thousands of computers via the packet flooding. Tools that can be used for DDoS attacks are Trino, Tribal Flood Network, or botnets. There are lots of them in the market, but uh, since the book is pretty old, quite possible that these tools are not available anymore. Trino or maybe better tools are available in form of Kali Linux. Distributed tools used to initialize coordinated UDP flood DOS attacks from multiple sources. Trino network consists of multiple quantities of the servers and large number of clients which you can add and then target any individual computer. Hacker computer is connected to a Trino master computer in a DOS attack utilizing the Trino network. Hacker computers instruct the master computer to begin the DOS attack and again one or more IP addresses. So it would be spoofing its IP address and then it would be targeting uh, using the all other computers to one target machine. TFN is used to launch the coordinated DOS flood attacks from multiple sources. TFN has capacity to create the packets with spoofed source addresses. So it can create multiple spoofed addresses and then TFN network can generate DOS attacks such as UDP flood attacks or TCP SYN flood attacks, ICP MP echo or directed broadcast and TF TFN allows the same principle as Reno. Now botnets, which we call as zombies as well, a variety of softwares use DDoS attacks. The bot is a program that, um, that installs itself on a computer so that it can be controlled by the hacker. So it would sit idle, won't do anything unless and until the master would send command to the clients to take action. The botnet is a network of robot or zombie computers, can harness their collective power to damage or to out huge amount of junk emails, to send out huge amount of junk emails. Prevention and mitigation of DOS and DDoS attacks is network administrators can use packet filtering on the IP routers to give basic access control. This is often slow, uh, slows the router performance to an unacceptable point. Now the second way to prevent is from a network address translation to change the internal IP address from the external IP address refuses uh, refusing the network traffic from specific TCP ports limiting the network traffic coming from a specific network address. Scanning the network traffic for viruses is undesirable application solutions were designed to prevent the DOS attacks on LAN subnets are not meant for web development. Cisco CSS 11,000 series switches gives comprehensive website and server system security. Switches provide site level safety follows DOS attack, firewall security, NAT, and load balancing. Now, latest technologies which we have, especially the switches as they have mentioned uh, for Cisco as well as the latest firewalls, they are equipped to handle these kind of problems because they were very common in 1998 and onwards where uh, they, uh, the switches did not come uh, bundled with the security procedures in order to handle these kind of situations. Other preventive measures are to implement the router filters or ingress filtering, any traffic which is coming in the network. Computers should constantly be updated with the relevant security updates, patches, etc., which are released very frequently now by Microsoft, especially Windows 10 and 11 uses intrusion detection systems, which we call IDS or intrusion prevention systems, IPF. Disable any unnecessary services on the system or if supported, enable the quotas on the operating system so that you have limited storage available on which you'll be storing your stuff. Important to establish baseline activities. Now, it may years for preventing the DDoS attacks is to filter all RFC 1918 address space by using the access control list. Access control list are the uh, security lists on the uh, switches or routers, which tells them that what to do on certain kind of networks. You are allowing traffic from a specific range of IP addresses, and you are denying traffic from specific range of IP addresses plus the servers where the people would be able to access, students, faculty, staff, their own authority levels and all those things. 
rate the limit ICMP packets if they are configurable and then configure the rate of limiting the SYN packets which could be sent from one computer to another. Now usually these uh, latest firewalls and switches comes in with the hashing algorithm so not necessarily it would detect on the source and destination of the packets where it's flowing but it would detect the overall behavior of the attacks. If it's matching with the heuristics of the, uh, of the attacks, it would automatically delete it or further uh, block the user from the network. Use such as Tripwire the, uh, to detect the changes in the configuration information on other files. Problem with the mitigation of the DOS attacks. Attacks are easily mistaken for a smile spike in a network activity upon detecting an attack, initiate blocking the packets from the origin IP to the victim. So you can see that who's the originator and who's the victim. If constantly there are lots of packets flowing from the originator to the victim and they are half open connections, you can detect that it's a DDoS attack. Now patch machines and applications, so it's not only the operating system that should be patched, but it should be the applications that, uh, as well. Suppose you are using an HR or a payroll application and there are some latest updates for that. Make sure that you are applying all latest patches for that. Maybe that would uh, make your application vulnerable for any kind of DDoS attacks. Stay current and new reports of the DOS and DDoS attacks in the systems and run an intrusion detection system that alerts you when a network is experiencing an unusual traffic or an activity.